we are in uh, chapter two about the relationship between uh, moments and history. And we want to give a commental interpretation of the five Schaeffer orthogonal polynomial. So last time we introduced, in the first part of chapter two, we introduced uh, Laguerre history with a bijection with permutation. And this gave a proof of the fact that the moment of the Laguerre for alpha equal one are exactly n plus one factorial, the number of permutation. So I just remind you this fundamental bijection because we are going to use the same bijection for the five Schaeffer orthogonal polynomial. So what we have done, we have defined Laguerre history. Laguerre history is a pair omega C P and omega is a Motzkin pass. C is a coloring in two colors of the level of the Motzkin pass in blue and red. P is a choice function, a certain vector of possibility. And each pi, i from 1 to n, if n is the length of the pass, each pi is between 1 and the weight of the elementary step omega i. So what is the weight, the valuation we have given? We have given four possible weights for four possible elementary steps. When I am at level k, I have a weight a k, b prime k, double prime k, and c k. All of them are k plus 1. There is a blue step, the red, going north-east or going south-east. So here is an example of a hermit of a Laguerre. You have this Motzkin pass. In black number here above the pass are exactly the weight, k plus 1. Possibility for the choice pi. And here I have to join in blue some numbers. 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, which is a choice function. And last time we explained, we defined a bijection between such history, Laguerre history, with a Motzkin pass, the coloring, the choice function, which sometimes I call this number of possibility, because for each elementary step, we are going to perform an operation in a certain number of ways, and I have to choose which, which, which choice I am going to do. And permutation here is in plus one factorial. So I just recall you very briefly this bijection. You cut the path into each elementary step, first, second, third, etc. So you have four kinds of elementary steps. For each elementary step, I put the, the weight, k plus one, k plus one, k plus one, k plus one. And here I choose the choice function in blue. And then from this tableau, I can construct by inserting one, two, three, etc in certain position. You insert one, two, three, four according to the choice function. The weight in black gives you the number of antecels where you can perform the, the, the insertion in a certain number of ways given by the blue number. And now each time you insert a new number, maybe you add an antecel at the left, maybe on the right, maybe no antecel at all, or maybe you, you add two antecels. So this is the four possible uh, elementary step, which give you four possible choice to add an empty cell on the left, on the right, both or... And I remember, because I'm always confused, that with the red level means you add an empty cell on the left. Because in France, the left, first political party on the left. If you are Indian, blue, it's on the left. So just remember that blue, you don't add an empty cell on the left. Okay, so here is, uh, is the permutation I get from the, from the Laguerre history. And from the general theorem that the moment of orthogonal polynomial satisfying a three-term linear equance relation with coefficient BK lambda K, the moments are the sum of the weight of all this Motzkin pass. So in the case of the Laguerre, L with alpha equal one, then this give a proof, this bijection give a proof that the moment are n plus one factorial. With this weight, bk equal 2k plus 2, lambda k equal kk plus 1. So if I know that the Laguerre satisfies this three-term recurrence relation with bk lambda k, then by, then by commentary x, I have given a proof that the moment are this. There was a trick in this proof that I split the valuation in four 
to get a quadratic, to split this quadratic polynomial in k plus 1, k plus 1. And also, I had a blue and red. This is more convenient. Instead of 2k plus 2, I get k plus 1, k plus 1 everywhere. So you see, so the split of the evaluation bk is in two parts, the blue and the red. And the split of the lambda k, which is a quadratic polynomial, is also given as a product of ak minus 1 multiplied by ck. So splitting this valuation bk lambda k in terms of four valuation b prime by b double prime a and c, I will do this for each Schaeffer polynomial. Because if, if each Schaeffer, I will get the bk lambda k, I will start from this, and then I will have to put a, a certain splitting so that the weight, the moment is going to appear from this splitting. So there is a certain choice to split this in two, in two different ways. So now, today we are going to introduce the first step, the Laguerre history with the weight. The Laguerre polynomial as the parameter alpha. So I have to understand what means this parameter alpha in the bijection between history and permutation. So this was the general. So for k plus alpha, now instead of k, k plus 1, I have uh, this weight now. Lambda k is k times k plus alpha. Bk is 2k plus alpha plus 1. So this comes from uh, standard books in orthogonal polynomial. You I suppose it is known that the Laguerre polynomial can be defined by this bk lambda k with a parameter alpha. And then I have to do the analog, splitting my weight bk lambda k into four different weights with the ak and ck. But I have to choose where I am going to split the parameter alpha. So what I am going to do is the following. So I, this is a certain choice. Huh? I will put the, the alpha on the blue, on the b double prime k. On the blue level, there will be the alpha. And the alpha will be also on ck on the southeast step. So that you get this relation. And if you check the sum of the two blue and the weight of the blue and the red east step will be this, 2k plus alpha plus 1. Now, if you take the product of a k minus 1 ck, give you lambda k, and with this, this will give you k, k plus alpha. So it's a certain choice. Huh? If I do different choice, I will get something different. So we have to, to adjust so that it's going to mean something on the, in the permutation. Gene, the purpose is to give interpretation. Alpha is going to be a parameter on the history. So what, what it means in terms of permutation. So I have this uh, Laguerre history. And I'm going to put a weight on the history. So because I have, I have already put the, this is the weight I am going to put on the Laguerre history. And so I put this weight. So you put, you put an alpha. Each time the choice pi is one, for each blue is a step or south, south is step. See, in the previous choice. So here you have this, you, you have k plus 1 choice for the blue step. There is k plus 1 choice if I am at level k, if I am at level k. So one of the choice is going to be weighted alpha. It can be the first, the last. But let's take the first. If you take the first choice, pi equal 1, then I will put my weight alpha. Also, when I see k, when it's a southeast uh, step, when I go down, I will put also the weight alpha for the first choice. There is k plus one possible choice. So this is alpha in general in all this story of uh, about orthogonal polynomial. This alpha, beta, eta, there is some choice, and usually it's you can put a weight each time you put an extreme choice, the first or the last. Even though I sh should be able to put two parameters. Alpha for the first, beta for the last. The Q analog is different. It's, you put 
If just I, you put Q power I. Yes, yeah, the same as in passive, yes. But if you put two parameters in passive alpha beta, then problem begins. It's possible, but it's uh, with a Q, then the three parameters together, it's a problem. Uh, so it's not easy to do any easy interpretation. The last year I have put with a interpretation with Lagerhips of segment uh, to prove the Joshua Verges theorem, the most simple interpretation of the partition function for the passive with three parameters, Q, alpha, beta. So for the passive, we have alpha, two parameters, alpha, beta. It's kind of Q analog of alka, alka, um, al salam kara polynomial. Okay, so let's go back to the simple case with only one parameter. So each time you have, you have a E step or a South step put the first choice, then I put a weight alpha. And this is equivalent to say, a little lemma, that the element i is a left to right maximum element in the permutation sigma, except the, the, except the last one, i equal n plus 1. See, so left to right maximum element. We have to define left, we have to, we define last time left to right minimum element, but here it's left to right maximum element. So when you read the permutation as a word from left to right, it's an element which is left to right maximum. There is no element on the left which are bigger than the element itself. So I will give a hint of the proof of this. So with this trick, by putting the weight alpha in a certain space, splitting the evaluation in in four possible parts, then putting the alpha or a certain first choice, then I get the left to right maximum element of the permutation. Proof. When you insert i in the first free position, the choice pi equal i. And you, if you insert this with this case of a south east step on east step, a blue east step, it means that you do not insert a free cell on the left. You insert only on the right. And all these values here are less than i. So you guess that there will be no possible way to have a value bigger than i on the left of i. So i will be a left to right maximum element. And conversely, the reciprocal is true also. If i is a north-east, if you go north-east or east, and if i is not an LR maximum element of sigma, if you do this, then because there will be a free cell here, so there will be some element coming after bigger, so i will not be a, a left-right maximum element. And this is for, for any value of pi, it's, uh, in fact. Not only for pi equal one, but if you if you add a empty cell at the left of i, i will never be a left to right maximum element. So this gives a proof of the lemma and the characterization of the left to right maximum element. So each one will correspond to a certain weight alpha. Total weight is the product of all the alpha, and so total weight will give me the number of left to right maximum element. So example, the permutation here, which came from the Laguerre history. So here are the left to right maxi maximum element, four, six, nine, the maximum, but don't consider the maximum. I claim that the weight alpha is always four, four and six, because nine was a special value. I had at the end, when at the end of the history, there was an empty cell and I had the max. But the weight alpha will be only here alpha to the square. Twice I will get a choice pi equal one with the corresponding blue e step or south e step. So let's check for i equal four. I am going down. See the choice is one. So I get uh, I get this element. And for i equal six, I am in blue e step. The choice is one. So I have again a left to right maximum element. 
Here you see the choice is one, but seven is not a left to right maximum element. Because at the left of seven, you put an empty cell, which will be filled by somebody bigger than it. So this is a characterization of the, how the weight alpha is becoming a weight in the permutation. And so I get a proof that the moment of the Laguerre polynomial are exactly the distribution of permutation according to the number of left to right maximum element, except the maximum one. So we have seen that this is a Stirling number, small s, and the distribution we have seen, it was alpha, alpha plus one, alpha plus two, alpha plus n. But because I take off the maximum element, the alpha will disappear from the monomial. So it is a proof that the moment is alpha plus one, alpha plus two, alpha plus n. Or in notation like this. And so for alpha equal one, you get n plus one factorial. For alpha equal zero, you get n factorial. The first layer of the ch chapter one was n factorial, the matching uh, polynomial of the complete Bapert graph. Here I am with alpha equal one and plus one factorial. So I can say more that definition, an element of the permutation will be called an is initial element when, if and only if the choice is pi equal one. So it's more general than the left to right maximum element. Each time you take a choice one, you can characterize this element in terms of the history. So the characterization is the following. An element X is of the permutation is initial, if and only if there is no element A and B in the permutation such that a is strictly bigger than x, sigma of x, sigma is strictly bigger than b, and with a equals sigma of i, b equals sigma of j, and uh, this and this, and px equal 1. This is summarized in this picture. See, you have, uh, you have uh, this is supposed to be an initial element, and you cannot find two elements a and b, which are in this position. They are not necessarily consecutive, and in the other diagram we have seen, but you have a, B and X is between A and B. And so the left to right minimum element are also initial elements. So it's contained both left to right and left to, left to right minimum, left to right maximum element of the permutation. But if you take the union of left to right minimum and left to right maximum, it will be strictly included. It will not give all the initial elements. So exercise, give a characterization of the left-to-right minimum element. Through the history, if you give me the history, what are the characterization of left-to-right minimum element? So the choice must be one, but there is something more. You cannot characterize by saying, okay, it's the, the elementary step is blue or red or north, south, east, as we have done before. The, there is more, the characterization is more complicated. So uh, here is the construction of the Laguerre story, and here in an example, the permutation is four, one, six, nine, seven, eight. So in uh, in blue, I put the left to right minimum element. In these two colors, the left to right maximum element. In brown, the maximum element, and here the initial element. And you see the seven is outside. It's not a left to right minimum, not not a left to right maximum. It's uh, more general than these two kinds of... Uh, so the exercise is to give a characterization of the left to right minimum element, which is... Uh, initial means uh, the definition means that the pi, pi, the choice is equal to one. Choice, when you take the first choice, this is a characterization. You cannot find two elements like this, which implies that uh, the left to right minimum element, there is no body like this. Left to right maximum element, there is no body like A. But this is more general. And the exercise is to give a characterization of the left to right minimum element. 
left right maximum was easy. We get it to get the proof of the moment of Laguerre with alpha parameter. But if I was taking the minimum element, it would be a little more complicated. You cannot characterize on, only with the type of step you are, do, you are performing and with the choice PI. There is more to say. And this gives you an example of the, the left to right minimum element, left to right maximum, and the initial element which contain the union of these two, but or usually in the, in the literature, it's a left to right minimum, because when I read the word from left to right, it's a minimum I, I am looking from left to right, and I take a, a left to right minimum. Uh, this is elementary exercise in computer science. Try to find the minimum of a sequence of uh, numbers. And uh, so you, you read each time, you read the first number, you put it in the memory. And if you met somebody which is smaller than this, uh, this element, then you will change the current left, uh, minimum element into this one until you reach when you are finished. And you are sure uh, that what you get is a minimum. And the num number of time you change your memory is exactly the number of left to right minimum element. And so the average of this algorithm is the harmonic number, 1 plus 1 over 2, which comes from the polynomial enumerating Stirling number. It's HN, so harmonic number, 1 plus 1 over 2, 1 plus 1 over 3, etc. This is a number uh, occurring many times in the analysis of algorithm in computer science. So the, in French, people also call this element saillant, or outstanding element. But outstanding, uh, Norway, so there is four kinds of outstanding element. So, or scion also. So you will see in my slide, the S of sigma will be the number of left to right minimum element because S, we remember the French uh, scion. Scion is outstanding, something which is scion in a, in a temple, in a sculpture. It's something coming out of the world. And, uh... So to go to the Schaeffer, the five Schaeffer, I need it's not fit very well, this uh, Laguerre history. I need a second type of history, which is very close. I need a restricted Laguerre history, which will be much more convenient to get the moment of the five Schaeffer. But I explained, the, in general, the Laguerre history for pedagogical reasons and for some other reason you will uh, understand in the next part of the chapter two. Next part, chapter 2c, where you will see uh, why I introduce this. Sometimes I call this enlarged Laguerre history, and the following ones are going to be restricted Laguerre history. So, definition restricted Laguerre history, it says that the choice pi is strictly bigger than one, it's not equal to one for each of these steps. For a blue east step and for south east step. Because for each of these steps, you do not open an empty cell on the left. In the history, in the construction, you don't open a pre cell. So, which means, in other words, that each time you insert a new element in your construction, in your permutation with some free cell. In case you put the, your element in the leftmost free cell, you must keep this free cell free, which means that if you perform this kind of step, you must open, you must open a free cell on the left. So you are not allowed to do this when you perform this step with choice one. If you do the other step, the red east step and the northeast, Automatically, they, they open a, a free cell on the left. So, in other words, it's a Laguerre history, and I start from the free cell, but I always keep a free cell on the left. And when I read my word, always there is a free cell on the left. So, at the end, when I have to put n plus 1 on the free cell, the n plus 1 will be the first element, which means that the number of such restricted Laguerre history is n factorial. Yes, it's a, uh, is it 
alpha equal to zero. If I put, if I was putting alpha, but the first time I put alpha, the, it will be alpha equal zero. But in the interpretation of, uh, we, I give with the maximum element. Here I am with the minimum element. It's uh, if you if you wish it, it can be equivalent. Yes. So for this history, I, I will change the variable alpha into beta alpha plus one. Because when I put alpha equal zero, I get beta equal one, and beta will be the new parameter. Beta will be the new parameter each time you take the first choice. So for restricted Lager history, you put a weight for each choice of this kind, with the choice is one, and with the red, or north east step. So this is equivalent to say that the, that now the element is the left to right minimum element of the permutation. It's totally different from the previous. Uh, previous was left to right maximum element. Now I am working with left to right minimum element. And each time I put the first choice for this kind of step, because it means I am putting in the first free cell, and I open a new cell, free cell on the left. So they will, you will not be able to find a smaller element coming after. All, the, the, all these elements are left to right minimum element. So it's different interpretation between left to right maximum and left for the enlarged uh, Lager history. And here I am with restricted and characterization with the left to right minimum element. And so I have a corollary that this is exactly the distribution of all left to right minimum element on permutation, which is beta multiplied by beta plus one, multiplied by beta plus two, etc. And for beta equal one, you get n, n factorial. And beta equal one means alpha equal zero. So you see, for the first kind, for large general Laguerre history, I was putting a weight alpha, which comes left to right maximum element, except the biggest one. But now I put a weight beta for the restricted Laguerre history, and I get back again the moment. It's going to be the same if you replace beta by alpha plus one. This will be the same formula, the same interpretation for the Laguerre with the weight alpha. But this is better choice of weight and, uh, and condition on the history to get the five Schaeffer. So the five Schaeffer will be obtained by some Laguerre history. And each time you keep empty the, the first free cell, if you fill the first free cell, you, have, you need to put a new free cell on the left. So that always your word begin with a free set on the left. And so here is the two possible interpretation, Laguerre history and restricted Laguerre history. So I have uh, there are two special cases where for the blue step and for the CK is going, going down, I am not allowed to use because this step does not open the free cell on the left. So here is a weight BK lambda K. Here BK equal to K plus two, BK equal to K plus one, lambda K, K, K plus one, lambda K equal K two, K two. And the uh, so moment in both cases has N factorial and plus one factorial. But what is interesting to see is when you put the parameter beta equal alpha plus one, on this side, I have BK equal 2K plus alpha plus 1. On this side, I have BK equal 2K plus beta. On this side, you see, I have K, K plus alpha. Here, I have K minus 1 plus beta and K, which give me, on this side, this moment. On this side, this moment in a natural way. Of course, they are the same. So now, all along this chapter, I will use this kind of restricted Laguerre history, which are enumerated by n factorial. This is permutation. 
Also, there is a nice way to describe this, uh, this uh, bijection. It's to describe it with binary tree, with increasing binary tree. So it can maybe con more convenient, more visual, especially in chapter four, five, five, when you, we will do uh, Schaeffer polynomial and the uh, rota umbral calculus to understand the Q and S operator in terms of, uh, of history. It will be better to look on the, it will be a forest of binary tree. And uh, also, uh, it depends on your taste because when, you, when we submit the paper with Jean Françon a long time ago in 78, we have written everything in terms of binary tree. And the referee say, no, 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 binary tree is not, uh, don't like binary tree, it's binary tree, it's a uh, pure mathematics journal, so you should do everything with word. Okay. <laughs> we, sh we do everything with word. And then my friend Philippe Flagelet, when he read the very complaint, why you put word everywhere? It's much more uh, easy to understand with binary tree. Uh, so, okay, so I, I give you the two versions. Word and binary tree, and we choose which one you like the best, or which one you. It's uh, good to have different versions of the same things, and uh, because sometimes if you are on a research problem, maybe you have, don't have the good version, the good visualization, the good way. There is many equivalent way to to see this, and if you have the good way, I mean, we have seen for to interpret the alpha of the Laguerre. Sometimes it was the max, sometimes the mean. It was slightly different division of the valuation of the four possible step and uh, it depends so it, you must have all this version in your mind and so I recall you the, from chapter one the, from uh, no, the part one of the of this sequence of course I have defined in chapter two I think one uh, no two a binary tree etc the Catalan garden so I just remind you some elementary definition so bind this is a binary tree Sometimes binary go, the root is below and the binary go increasing up. Sometimes they go down. It depends on your taste. In, uh, in computer science, everybody put binary tree going down. And uh, sometimes I, I use the both notation, but I think in part one, I use this notation. So binary tree is a triple. There is a root, which is here. So, and a left binary, a left subtree, uh, right subtree, which also are binary tree. So it's a recursive definition. This is why maybe in the paper with pure mathematics, they don't like recursive definition. It's a way of thinking in a, when you are a computer science. But the recursion, it must stop somewhere. So, so it stops when a binary tree can be empty. So you see, so this binary tree, this triple, here the left subtree, the right subtree. Here this, this binary tree, this is the root, this is the left subtree, and the right subtree is empty here. So this is the definition of a binary tree. The number of such binary is very well known to be the Catalan number. Also, sometimes people define binary tree with internal and external vertices. In fact, it's two kinds of binary tree. It's a called complete binary tree. Uh, maybe not everybody calls this complete binary, but in, in this series of lecture, I call this complete binary tree. So binary tree with n vertices and complete binary tree with two n plus one vertices. And the bijection is the following. You add, for any, anywhere, you add some new, uh, new edges in red, which in the vertices are, are called external vertices in red, because they are outside of the tree and internal vertices in black. And so the new definition of complete binary tree is again a triple, but now the, the binary tree, instead of being empty, is a single vertex in red, the leaf or the external uh, vertex. So you have to have in mind these two kinds of definitions. Sometimes people call this a binary tree. Or so in binary, in complete binary tree, there is only two kinds of vertices, two sun or two doctor and uh, zero sun. Or in, uh, in usual binary tree, there is two kinds of vertices. There is one single vertex on the left, single vertex on the right, no, no vertex at all, a leaf or a double vertex. So these four kinds of uh, vertices will correspond to the four kinds of step in a two column of skin path. So some vocabulary, binary tree, there is a root, there is a left subtree, the right subtree. If you take any vertex inside below, there is a subtree. This is a unique path going from the root to the subtree. 
And uh, so there is two kinds of... Uh, here I have the left son or left daughter here, right son or right daughter, and there is four kinds of uh, vertices, double vertex, simple vertex, right or left, and a leaf in the binary tree. So these four possible steps will correspond exactly in our machinery with Laguerre history to the four possible steps, going north-east, going south-east, a blue east step or a red east step. This, is, this will be the east step, this will be going down, and this will be going up. So also I will need, the, this is the left principal branch in the binary tree. Starting from the root, you, you always go left, 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 until you, you are finished, until you stop. So the longest sequence of such uh, left edges, longest sequence of such right edges, will be the right principal binary tree. And I will need to, there is a typical, uh, you can order the vertices of binary tree, the prefix order, in order, pre-order, etc. I will use in order or symmetric order, so which is defined in the following way. I'm going to visit all the vertices of the binary tree once and only once. So first, you visit the left subtree, which means that this is a recursive definition again. You take the left subtree, then, then, then you apply again the definition, then you visit the root, and then you visit the right subtree. Example, so you start from this root, visit the left subtree, Okay, so the left subtree, the root is here. So first visit the left subtree, then the root, two, and then the right subtree. So visit the left subtree, the inner body, the root, the right subtree, four. I have finished to visit the left subtree. Now I can visit the root of the main binary tree. And now visit the right subtree, etc. So you get what is called the symmetric order or in order. So this will be needed to define the, bi the bijection between permutation and increasing binary tree. So in all these course, I will see permutation. Also, we can see permutation as a special type of tree, the so increasing binary tree. So what means increasing binary tree? It means that the vertices of the tree are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. until n, n equals 9 here. And with the condition, that the, the vertices go increasing, the number here, go increasing, the level of the vertex go increasing, when you start from the root, and you go down inside the tree. So if you take any, this means if you take any vertex, the level of the left son or left daughter is bigger than the level of the root, and the level of the right son or right daughter is bigger than the level of the root. So you see, if, you take, if I take the subtree rooted in 3, all the elements below, all the subtree which is below 3, all the labels uh, are strictly bigger than 3. And the condition also is that each label, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, n, appear once and only once. So all the details are go back to chapter 2a in the first part of this uh, course, uh, the art of bijective quantorics. So I define now the bijection between this and permutation by defining the projection of uh, an increasing binary tree. So the projection is defined recursively. The projection of a binary tree, first, it's a word. It's a word in the letters 1, 2, 3, etc. First, you take the projection of the left subtree. You concatenate this word with the, the label of the root, x. And then you concatenate with the word the projection of the right subtree. In fact, it's equivalent to the symmetric order, or in order. Here, see, this is the projection of, the, of this increasing binary tree. See, first, uh, I have to take the projection of this, then I put the root, which is 1, and then the projection of the, all this, which so I have to take the left subtree, then again the left subtree, then again so the nobody, so I put the 6, then projection of this is 9, 7, 8, then I put the root 3, then I put 5, 
and then I put two. So in fact, you are reading your binary tree in symmetric order, in in order. This is another definition of the in order symmetric order. So if you want to define the reverse bijection, if you give me a permutation, how to construct the increasing binary tree? So if you, I will denote, uh, if you take any word in this tank letter, a word in the, in the letter 1 to n, when I put star, this is a free monoid, free monoid generated by an alphabet. We have said it in part one also. It's a, any word in this letter with distinct letters. Then you take, uh, I define the déployé. This is a French name, uh, déployé, because you have your word which is linear, and déployé means like a bird which extends its, uh, its wings. So déployé, you open, uh, going up. I, uh, I like this word, so sometimes I put some French word in there. Uh, to make some uh, exotic uh, <laughs> definition. So delta of W, you take a word, the deployee of the word, again, it will be defined recursively. This is a reverse, some kind of reverse recursive way of defining the projection. So if the word is empty, if there is nobody, then the, the tree will be empty. Now the deployee of a word W, so look at the minimum letters. It's not necessarily permutation, but all the let distinct. So look the minimum letters, and then the, you cut your word W in U M V, and then you can take the deployee of U, the deployee of V, and then this binary tree recursively, and you feel you that this this proposition that the two map. The projection from a binary tree. No, I think there is a mistake here. You should in inverse p, b, p and delta. If you take a, if you take a permutation, take the déployé. This gives you an increasing binary tree, and if you project, you get back the, the permutation. So this is a group of permutation, and I have denoted by T n the group of a increasing binary tree. The set, the set of increasing binary tree. So I'll give you an example uh, with this uh, increasing binary tree to give to get the permutation and to project the, this binary tree is equivalent to do the following. Uh, it's like in a movie. Suppose you suppose you press, you compress your binary tree. You compress like this, but uh, yeah, no, I'm not allowed to intersect. So when you compress, you see, I make this smaller and smaller, this bigger and bigger, so that everybody is going to to fit in the, So this is a projection. You see, this gives back the, the permutation. So now a few definitions. How to construct, the, if you have an element in the permutation, how to construct the left x is going to be the label of certain vertex in the tree. How to construct the left subtree and the right subtree. So this is the notion of x factorization. So suppose you get a permutation, a certain value, an element x in between 1 and n. And then the word sigma, permutation written as a word, I call this the x factorization. If and you can split the word sigma in u lambda of x x rho of x v, so this is a factorization of my word, my permutation satisfying the two following condition: the letter of lambda of x and of rho of x, all the letters are strictly bigger than x. And more, the length of this the two factor which are at the left and the right of x are the maximum possible lengths. So this is uh, this is x factorization. Uh, you start from your letter x, and then left and right, you read as much as you can, taking word consecutive letter which are strictly less than x, and you stop when you you feel when you finish at the end of the beginning of the permutation, or if you fall on the letter which is strictly less than x. And a certain lemma too, that if you have 
a permutation, if you have the corresponding increasing binary tree, if you get the factorization, then the left subtree and right subtree, which are related to the vertex x inside the binary tree, is exactly the déployé of the, this factor lambda of x and this factor rho of x. If I want to compare this with, I have defined the x decomposition in my Lager history. Remember, there was an x, and there was some blue block below, some red block above. In fact, an uh, x was belonging to a big red block, and this gave me the reverse, reverse bijection to get the in red above the axis with x in the middle, and this big block is the this factorization, the lambda x, the rho x, and the x. Sorry, I forget to put the picture, but uh, one of these red blocks of the X decomposition is exactly this, uh, this part. All this word, lambda X, X, and rho X, and X belong to this block, which is called V index J, and the choice for X, P index X, was exactly the index of this block BJ in the X decomposition. So X factorization is a part of the X decomposition. But the corollary of this uh, previous uh, proposition here, of this previous lemma, uh, immediate corollary is that in the permuta in x, in the permutation sigma, x will be uh, will be a valet. We have defined valet, peak, double uh, rise, double descent, if and only if in the corresponding increasing binary tree. So valet correspond to correspond to double vertex. Peak correspond to a leaf, double rise correspond to a right, just a right sun, right simple vertex, and double descent correspond to this kind of picture. So this is an immediate uh, corollary of my lemma. Yes, Amri, you are. Double, uh, this is a right simple vertex, and it means uh, double. Uh, in blue is double rise. It will be a rise because because I am putting my trees going uh, with uh, the head is below the root on the bow. If I are putting my binary tree in a commutal way, the root below and all the tree going up, then you will see these edges going to the right. It will be a rise, and this edge is supposed to be a descent. So because of the convention, it seems to be reversing. But no, it's so it's correct. So, example, it's a, here is my permutation. Here is a, this is a done sequence with a subdivision in peak, trough, double rise, double descent. Here is a corresponding uh, increasing binary tree. The valet are 1, 3, 7. Uh, here the valet 1, 3, 7. And you see the double vertex 1, 3, 7. 2, 2 is a double descent. Uh, it's a, with a convention, I put a 0 at the end. Zero everywhere, so two is a double descent, and so you go to the left. Again, it's good for me. Red is going to the left, and you want to sell. Okay. So this is three kinds. See, double rise, the six is in blue, and it's a double rise. It's a, it's a unique single vertex going with the right sun, and six here is a double double rise. So I just repeat, to define double right, double sound, I have the convention, put it at zero at the beginning and zero at the end. And this convention was, was for enlarged, large Lager history. For the restricted Lager history, we will change the convention and put this value to be infinite. So we will put, uh, this will change the convention, you will see. I will explain more later. This is a convention for, this was for the, for the first kind of uh, Lager history. And we were working also with the left to right minimum element, left to right maximum, etc., etc. So what means in terms of increasing binary tree, the left to right minimum, left to right maximum. So uh, I have the left to right minimum element, right to left minimum element. And then proposition, the left to right minimum element and left to right maximum are exactly the what is called the left branch of, a binary, of the increasing binary tree. 
And the right one, the, uh, the principal right one, I don't know if what is the exact vocabulary, but with the picture you will see better. This is, you see, this is the left to right minimum element. And they will correspond exactly to this left branch principal. Sometimes it's called principal left branch of the binary tree. You start from the root and you go always left, 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 left. The principal left branch. This is secondary element. If you start from this, go to the left, and uh, this is, uh, you go to the left as maximum as possible. But if you start from the root, this is called the principal left branch. And these elements are exactly 5 to 1, the left to right minimum element. So this is exactly the left, the right to left minimum element. This is the right to left minimum element, three and one, are exactly this branch here. So now I describe the same uh, bijection, but with increasing binary tree. So what about the max? The other max? Ah, you cannot see the max here. If you want to And we should do in the reverse way to put the root to be nine and to do exactly everything. Uh, if you have a permutation, you do the planarization of the permutation, then you can see the four left right. It's element having nothing on the left. There is four directions north, east, north, west, south, east, south, west. So you can see on the planarization of the permutation, you can see the four kinds of uh, when you go to binary tree, you have only two kinds of uh, left to right. Uh, right to left minimum element. So now I repeat the same construction with binary tree. So this was the construction of a, we have seen the last chapter. From Laguerre history, you get a permutation. Now repeat the same construction. So here I am going left. See, for each step, you are going, this is a double. Uh, This step is a northeast, I mean, in the binary tree, in the Moskin path, excuse me. This is the first northeast step. So we make a double. Uh, now this is a red step, which corresponds to double descent. A red step corresponds to only, uh, you put a left sun here, and you take the second choice. So now you have two empty cells. Next one, you take, uh, you put a double vertex because it's a northeast step and taking the second choice. So the possible choice on the binary tree, I will wait as a label from left to right. So you can continue like this. It's, a, it's exactly the similar construction, but in terms of word, I put it in terms of binary tree. So each time you see you are binary tree, there is some empty, empty leaf, empty, like when I was well, only one choice, and here I have two choice. I have some empty leaf, and then you the choice choice function give you which where you are going to insert this, labeling this leaf from left to right. And each time you put a new vertex, then there's four possible ways you, to add a left sound, a right sound, to do nothing, and to write two, which correspond to the four possible steps of the Moskin path. And this is a, just a translation of the bijection with Laguerre history in terms of uh, increasing uh, binary tree. So sometimes it's more convenient to look like this, especially for the restricted Laguerre history. Same construction at the same time on both in word in binary tree. So you can check that each time I here I have the projection. I have the projection of this tree and the empty cell corresponds to the empty, empty vertex. So if you see each time here I have two empty cells, here I have two empty. So it's exactly, see, each step is a projection of the choice. So it's exactly similar construction. If you prefer to work with linear world, or if you prefer to work with a binary tree. And so the bijection between Laguerre history and permutation, in fact, from a Laguerre history, you get an increasing binary tree, and projection of this increasing binary tree gives you the permutation. So now I have all the tools to do the orthogonal Schaeffer polynomial. I remind you the definition of orthogonal of Schaeffer polynomial. They can be defined in two different ways, by genetic function or with delta operator. 
And that was the theorem I, last time, or Mexner, which says that Schaeffer polynomial, orthogonal polynomial are Schaeffer, if and only if, BK lambda K satisfy this kind of, uh, of recurrence relation where the, uh, BK are linear in K and lambda K are quadratic in K. So there is some, to prove it's a theorem, there is some condition on the, your own real number, there is some positivity, but uh, we will, I think it should be true with, uh, in a formal way. In fact, I don't know, pure commutable proof of the fact that it, if an orthogonal, then you get exactly BK on the K like this. So there is a classification is, uh, what's five, there is five possible Schaeffer polynomial. So if you have A equals zero, if I, uh, you must, and C equals zero, and also B equals zero, then you get the Hermit polynomial. And then the four other cases with A different of zero. So this case uh, with B non zero is uh, this kind of, uh, there's a Q analog which is called the big Q Hermit. So it's, uh, it should be included in the five, in the five different cases. But in real analysis, you distinguish between this and positive and negative, etc. And this gives you five Schaeffer orthogonal polynomial. But I will do, I will forget the analysis and do everything formally. So these five Schaeffer polynomial orthogonal are defined by this five orthogonal relation. So this is the moment. The moment are, this is the, the linear functional f of xn. This is the integral. Uh, so the orthogonality of each of this class is given by this beautiful integral. Look at this. And we are able with the Lager history to, to give a common interpretation of the moment. All this I am going to give without any calculus, commutable interpretation of the moment. And this phi only with the Lager polynomial, which are one located here in the five Schaeffer in the big uh, a ski scheme. So Charlie history, we, we have done Hermit, we have done Laguerre, but let's do Charlie history. So Charlie polynomial can be defined, uh, maybe I go fast because it's, uh, it's with this interest in this lecture, is the moment of the polynomial. But for your background, it can be defined, Charlie polynomial can be defined in many different ways, can be defined explicit formula for Charlie polynomial, exponential generating function for Charlie polynomial, orthogonal relation for Charlie polynomial, where this is uh, an integral. In fact, it's, uh, it's a function with some jump. It's a discrete, in fact, integral, where this function is defined by some jump at each integer. And, uh, so you should, uh, it's not a continuous, it's discrete uh, orthogonality. But we need in this lecture to just to define Charlie like this, Charlie polynomial, can be defined by this lambda k equal a k for k strict bigger equal to one and bk equal k plus a. So I start from this. I apply my methodology with Lager history and we will get the moment as a generating function of permutation no, a partition according to the number of parts. So it's a polynomial enumerating partition by number of parts. So this is a Stirling number with a capital S. This is a number of partitions of a set with an element having k part. So a, the parameter a, it should be the same parameter, this is in red, this is in blue. The same parameter a is going to count the number of blocks of the partition. The proof is very simple. It's because this is a special, this is a restriction of the choice of the Lager history. The bk lambda k are just smaller restricted. So you do the same bijection but there is some choice forbidden. So let's see what happened. So I, I am, again, I'm going to split my BK lambda K into two. So B prime K equal A, B double prime K equal K, A K equal A and C K equal K. I'm going to do the construction with a binary tree. It will be more uh, beautiful with uh, increasing binary tree. So for each of these steps, so here is a Charlie story. So is a, again a, a Motkin path with in, step in blue and red. So when you have a red is a step, you see, there is only one choice. If I put A equal one, B, B prime K equal one. So there is only one choice for this step. 
This step I opened on the tree and edges in the left. It's a double descent in the permutation. And I label the choice by A. Now if I take this blue uh, is a step, then there is K choice. I don't put any weight. Here, when I open a double uh, vertex, I put a weight A again. There is only one choice to open double vertex. And to put a leaf, there is K choice. So you see here, the choice is very restricted compared to a Lager history. Here is one choice, here is one choice. So let's start from this Charlie history. And I do the, so one, one is uh, north, is going to the northeast step. So there is one choice on A, weighted by A. Now the two, two is the east, is the red step. A label, uh, a red step is, uh, there is only one choice. So you put the two here. You see, this is this. Uh, now the three, three I'm going up. So I put a double vertex. So each time you put a double vertex, there's only one choice. The first choice. So always I put my choice on the leftmost. So the four, the four. Uh, now I am on the blue step. See, and the four uh, for a blue step, which is here. The k possible choice and k equal two. So for the four, I have two possible choice. I take the first choice. And when I am here, you see, I open and it is on the right. So five, five again, I'm going up. I open, uh, I am in this case with only one choice. The six, six is this case. I'm going down and I take the choice number, uh, I cannot read the six, is no, choice number three. So I am labeling the choice. This is the first choice, second choice, third choice. So I put the six here. The seven, eight, and nine. So what you get is exactly a partition. You see the block of the partition are one, four, eight, two, three, seven, nine, five, six. So if you take any partition, you can, you take the block, you can take the minimum element in each block, which is one, two, three, five. You can put this minimum element like this and put your block like this in increasing. Uh, so such kind of binary tree, increasing binary tree are in bijection with partition. And this tree is such as that there is a, all the double vertex are here on the left branch. And uh, all the left, uh, left edges, there is only one which is at the end. And here you see my binary tree. Here is empty cell. I am in the case of the restricted Lager history. I always, in all this construction, I will keep on the left, the first cell must be empty, which means in the binary tree, the last vertex of this branch must always be open. With restricted Lager history, I will always finish with increasing binary tree, having an empty cell on the left, or the edges is a, is a, is empty here, it's finishing with this. And so this is a proof that this is a moment are the number of uh, partition, but the parameter A is counting the number of blocks because I put an A for each of these steps, which was a two, for example, was this kind of step, and I put an A for each of these steps. So you see on the left branch, there is two possible way, it's a double vertex or a single vertex, which correspond to these two, this B prime K and A K equal A. So see, if you have the general problem, take the Charlier, so you have to work to put the A in, a, when you split your valuation in like this, you have to be careful to put the A in a good place so that you are going to count the length of this total number of blocks. It's a, so this is an example of Charlie history with using the restricted Lager history. Yes, you can do, maybe we will uh, make some mess, where will be the A, the, the blocks? Okay, you can do, you can mix everything, but if you're not careful, then uh, 
your parameter will be somewhere split in the tree and uh, here I so Hermit is still in the special case of Charlier. It is. The Hermit, it's this special case of trees. It's because this is a, this is a bijection with an, uh, uh, an involution with no fixed point. Uh, it's, this is special Charlier history. It's, uh, all the blocks have length two, and there is no isolated point on the left branch. So this no, no vertex like this, no vertex like this. Here, only one choice, and vertex like this. So this is a special case. And again, you see, there is an open cell here. And such special binary tree are in bijection with this arc diagram or involution, no fixed point. And the cycle of length 2 are all this cycle here, 1, 3, 2, 7, 4, 5, 6, 8. And then you, you put in total order the minimum element of each cycle of length 2. So I get Hermit again as a special case of the Lager history, special case of Charlie, which is special scale of Lager. Lager history with uh, keeping open. I should, uh, to give you an example of, of uh, such uh, keeping open always the left. Here is a kind of Hermit, but with, uh, with a coefficient B prime K equal A now. So a kind of extension of the Hermit. And then what you will get is now the moment will be the number, total number of involution. And counting the fixed point will be counting exactly like the block of the for the Charlie. So this is an extended Hermit, or it's 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 contained also in the Q analog of the big Hermit. Or, uh. Ah, now we attack the two the two most impressive integral with the Mexner first kind, or sometimes it's called Mexner first kind, Mexner second kind, or Mexner and Mexner for that sake. So the Mexner, uh, Mexner to court, Mexner first kind, can be defined by the explicit coefficient, can be defined by exponential directing function, or can be defined by, uh, by this again, uh, again, a discrete orthogonality. Uh, you have the sum, it's the integral, in fact, it's a discrete function, and you have the sum of all this, and the xk, you have to take the, polynomial for xk equal, equal is minus k minus beta. So if you do all this, then this is the coefficient in the orthogonality. And uh, so I am, I will start from the three term linear relation to get my moments. So I will change, I will make a change of notation from the Mexner, usual Mexner, I will take this Mexner, okay, just uh, to make a, a multiplicative factor. And so this Mexner will correspond to this BK lambda K, which seems to be sympathetic. <laughs> if you compare to, you come from the Lager history, uh, this is linear in K, this is quadratic in K, but this is sympathetic. C, ah, plus beta minus one, this, this look like the beta of the Lager, one plus C, but there is this factor here. Okay, let's cancel them. Uh, we don't need, because each time there will be uh, the weight, this, I will do this, and the weight for this BK lambda K will uh, is easy transformation for the weight coming from this from this Mexner polynomial. You will have to multiply everybody because each term, each elementary step is one over one minus C. So you have this easy relation, and starting from this BK lambda K, I will get this valuation, and by this relation, I will get uh, exactly the moments of this Mexner, which is a, this modified Mexner. Hmm? BK? Ah, yeah, because lambda K, lambda K will be split in two north east and south east step. So the square will be incorporated in each. And so the total, total number of time you get one over my C will be N. So after this preliminary, the starting point is this. Now oh, you have to split again in a good way to get something uh, beautiful. So for the okay, so double descent equals c times beta. So I, I take this term c k plus beta c. I put them in b prime k, and in the blue step I put k. 
Now the lambda k, which is going to be, uh, oops, sorry, lambda k, so which must be a k minus 1 multiplied by c k. So the k will be c k, and a k will be c times k plus beta, which corresponds. a k means training a double uh, a trough in the permutation, a valet in the permutation, a descent, you see, and uh, if I take a k minus 1 multiplied by c k, I get lambda k. Now, with all this preliminary, I can write easily that the sum of the weight of all the Motzkin paths of length n is equal to the sum of all permutation of beta. The parameter beta, which is uh, here and uh, here, is going to be the left to right minimum element. Uh, if you go back to the, to the restricted Lager history, where I am using the parameter beta, uh, not the alpha plus one of the large uh, Lager history. If you use the restricted Lager history parameter beta, uh, this was the parameter beta who was counted by with the double descent, and this AK when I create a, a ballet, and you see the beta is, a, is the first choice. Each time I have this step of first choice, each time I have this step, this is the east red step, this is the north east step in the Motkin path. Each time you take the first choice, you take you get the left to right minimum element in the restricted Lager history. So the C, each time you have this, or oh, this, this is exactly, it's going to count the descent of the permutation. See, the descent is this uh, kind of uh, edges, and here is the descent, here is the descent. So C is going number D of sigma, is the number of descent of the permutation. So easily, you, we get the, we get the moment as the sum of all permutation of the, with the two parameters, number of left to right minimum element, S is for number of salient, element salient, and C, D for descent. Now, if you go back to the, the evaluation the previous valuation, because I have the 1 over 1 minus c, so the moment will be 1 over 1 minus c power n multiplied by the weight of valuation v of omega. But now if I put beta, this is maybe complicated to see. <coughs> if I put beta equal 1, what you get is uh, this summation don't, don't look this, but this summation becomes, in fact, the Eulerian polynomial. The polynomial enumerating permutation by number of rises or by number of descent. And now there is a well-known formula for Eulerian polynomial that if you divide this by 1 minus c power n, that's what we must do for the moment of the... This is, there is a formula like this. But this was for beta equal 1. If you put the beta, then there is an analog formula. So I will not prove this. Maybe you will be interested in finding oh, beta analog. Of a, so from the theory of Eulerian polynomial, I will get uh, I will get the moment of the Maxner polynomial. If you admit this uh, two formula, so explicit formula, there is no more summation over permutation. So this is the moment of the Maxner. If I go back to the Maxner with the change of variable I have done, if you remember the orthogonality of the Maxner, the discrete orthogonality, and if I take the linear functional defining the orthogonality. This summation, if you compare this and this, it's exactly the same. 
if you change your variable x with k, you, it's a kind of a funny story. <laughs> it's like we we are eating our on the table. It's a, Special case, beta equal 1, c equal 1 over 2. And the, the BK lambda k with the tilde is going to be 3k plus 1 and 2k, 2 to the square. And the moment is going to be the sum of all permutation, 2 power, the number of descent. And this is exactly the number of uh, order of n. This is easy exercise to take a permutation put a color on the descent, blue or red, and then put this in bijection with order partition. This is easy, more uh, medium, maybe more difficult exercise. Aha, but I have this direct uh, 3k plus 1, 2k to the square. So try to find a direct bijection between some kind of Laguerre history and order partition. The blocks are totally ordered in the partition. So it seems that this is more general than the Laguerre. Laguerre was 2k plus 1 and here k to the square. So it seems to be an extension of the Laguerre history with three possible steps on the Motskin pass, two possible steps on the northeast or southeast. But with the parameter it was a special case because c was 1 over 2. And if you plug one over two in the formula, the plug the three apparent naturally and the two appear here. So it's a try to find a, a direct uh, bijection between some kind of history related to this, analog of Laguerre with three colors and two colors here. And uh, what is the beta? Now the beta in the, is here and beta, uh, again, question, is it the number of blocks of the partition? If you look at the other exercise, what is the beta in the total order partition? And finally, I will finish this chapter 2b with a fifth class of Mexner Schaeffer, Mexner polynomial, the Mexner Polacek. Okay, so the Mexner Polacek are defined this. Uh, Exponential generating function. We are in real analysis huh, here. With this uh, orthogonality, where W, W is this function, all this. And we are going to get an interpretation again of the moment of this polynomial as soon as I, the specialist of analysis, will give me the BK lambda K. Uh, if I admit that BK lambda K are this, so the BK are 2K plus eta delta, lambda K is this. So I start from this, huh, from, from the commercial point of view. I don't claim that I have a commercial proof. I don't claim that from, I interpret the integral, everything, everything. No, I, uh, I start from the three term linear reconciliation and then uh, I give the moments. So B prime K, you have again to split in red and blue, the ETH step. So I will put like this with double descent, double rise. And for the for the lambda K, I will put this, the valet here and the leaf here. Oh, it's close to the first to the first Mechner, right? So again you feel that eta is going to be like a left to right minimum element and uh, Delta is going to be something related to rises or descent or something uh, different. And then I put, I can, from this definition, from this split of, of the BK lambda K like this, you can easily, in the same uh, way, by using the restricted Laguerre history, you can, uh, you can express the moment like this. One is missing. One is missing. Uh, one is missing. Uh, so AK minus one. Minus one. Yes, AK minus one. That's what comes in lambda k is AK minus one. Oh, I see. Lambda k, yes. Oh, I see. Lambda k is AK minus one. 
And so the, the a k minus one, the k minus one become here, and it's uh, it's become it's become uh, k plus eta. Okay. So by usual methodology, again, I can get this formula for the moment, the sum of all permutation, eta, the number of left to right minimum element. So what means d, d, r, d, d, and v? So s of sigma, left to right. So d, d is the number of double rises. d, r, d, r. In d, d is the number of double descent. It's like this, inside the permutation. And v is the number of valley of the permutation. And so you get this formula, and uh, now you can rewrite this as putting delta in factor in the beginning, and write this is a more simple way. Eta again, uh, left, right, minimum element. But now you have only the number of valley, because n, total number of elements, is the number of double rise plus number of double descent, plus twice the number of valley. So don't forget that we are in the restricted Laguerre history. And maybe I did not say enough clearly that in a restricted Laguerre history, the definition of double right, double descent, peak, and trough are with this notation infinite here because the left, the left cell is always empty. So he's waiting, waiting, waiting for, the, for somebody bigger. So he's waiting for the infinite. He can wait for a long time, uh, except if you are Ramanujan, the man who knows infinite, but then here is zero. And so you see, in that case of the restricted Laguerre, with the convention of infinity, yeah, there is always the same number of rise and same number of descent. So knowing this, then you can, this is easily transformed into this. And that's, uh, that's the most simple formula. I cannot get um, an explicit formula like for the Mexner, but this for mu n is the same as this one. So this is uh, for the the mu n, the moment, when you apply the linear functional to x power n, this integral with this is equal to this. So you can see the power of a bijection. Uh, as soon as you can, uh, one step is missing. It's uh, from this integral, maybe to, to get the exponential generating function. If we get exponential generating function, or, uh, then we can maybe get the BK lambda kept by uh, a commutal way. It's, uh, so the distribution of uh, the sub sigma really affect this S of sigma alone. Its distribution is the same as the distribution of left-right max. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Yes, yes, this is left-right. This is left-right minimum. Yes, left-right min is the same as left-right max. Yes, yes, yes. The distribution yes. is the same. Yeah, it's the same, yes. So which means there's, there's a bijection which relates, uh, uh, converts the left-right min statistic. Yeah, yeah. There is some easy bijection. But for the Laguerre history, it's very important. You have to concentrate on left to right minimum element. Because if I want to express by the Lagarde the left to right maximum, then it's not easy to. For the large Lagarde history, to see, to characterize, remember the first, the first interpretation was with in large Lagarde history, with n plus one factorial, and then I can characterize the left to right maximum element. It was, uh, it was uh, the first choice. And you don't open a, new, a cell, open cell on the left. So it was the blue E step and the, the, the peak step. But then if I want to characterize for this case the left right minimum element, that is not possible just by looking at the kind of uh, elementary step, that is four kind, and looking at the choice equal one. You have to say more that, which is uh, depend of the history. At a certain step, the last time you fill up this, then the, so the condition cannot be translated. So easily as interpretation. But, so uh, you, but, but of course. Right? There's but a between those converts. No, I'm just wondering whether. So if you apply that bijection, mm -hmm. uh, what happens to this number? Transform. Because the bijection is just to take the complementary, the reverse image. So the valley become peak or something like that. So is it? Uh, because suppose you put your permutation in a graphical way. So you you are you 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 have your valet, your peak, etc. Taking left to right or left to right maximum is just making a symmetry of all the picture. Point with nobody else with will become point with nobody else. Now here, so complementary. 
and the valet will become the peak, etc. So you can rewrite this with left right max and peak here. Yeah. So if you apply this to quota as fast fundamental variation, then it will. Uh, I mean, for ah. cycles, I'm just wondering finally what is it in terms of cycles? Ah, ah, this is another story. With cycle, we will do this. Oh, everything, it's possible to do all this with cycle. So this will be another story. So it's in ch next chapter, no, next, uh, in last part of chapter two, we will, uh, we will see that in fact, the Laguerre history was very, it was, it was a general principle to make the closure of an history. And we will understand to do the same with cycle. We will understand the Charlie and uh, we will understand many things by the general principle. And I will do this the same with cycle. And also I will do this with the three interpretation with uh, permutation as a word, which is equivalent to as a binary tree, permutation with cycle notation, and there will be what I call last year the Lager heaps, which is probably the most powerful interpretation. Because you will have all these symmetries, the left to right, right to left, the four element. You will see this in the, that you cannot see on the permutation, the four uh, parameter. Uh, special each case, delta equals zero, eta equals one which means uh, bk equals 0, lambda k equal k to the square. And then what I get, it's permutation with no double rise, no double descent, with an even number of elements. So it's a number of alternating permutation. This is a Euler number with generating function, the, the second uh, numbers. So this is exactly the special case. You see, the second number are a special case of this uh, Mexner. Polacek polynomial with two parameters. This is an alternating permutation. Usually it starts with a descent, but here it's alternating with a rise. It corresponds to this increasing binary tree. Always there is this empty. The leftmost uh, vertex of the left branch is empty. And uh, so you have an even number. If it was odd number, it will be the tangent number. If it was filled here with a number. But here is an even number. And uh, this is again a special case with the second number. And I will finish with why to do this, all this machinery, Mexner, first kind, second kind, Charlie. Why not to do this the most general case uh, with the five? Uh, so this, as a summary, this was the five possible uh, known Schaeffer polynomial. This was the five BK lambda K, the five uh, moments here. This was a summation on permutation. And we have a transformation with a, an identity on the Eulerian polynomial. This was a special case here. And I can do in a more general case uh, the Schaeffer, because we have this formula. We have BK equal a polynomial of degree one, lambda K polynomial of degree two. So why not to put uh, BK equal this? To put six parameters, lambda K equal this. To put, this is the most general uh, polynomial in degree one, the most general quadratic polynomial in degree two, with even the, there's too much variable. But these parameters are interesting because they have a meaning in the permutation. So I can put six parameters. And the moment of this uh, general Schaeffer are exactly this big summation over all permutation, where I have the, the left to right minimum element. I have the double right, double descent, the valet, and I have two more variables. F of x is the number of left to right minimum element, which are a descent of the permutation. And this P of sigma is the number of peak. So you can prove this, you see, to have this six parameter, six polynomial. If you see the reference in the, I put in the website, there is a paper uh, lecture note by Zeng. He gave a series of lectures in the United States and uh, there's a 50 pages paper and he, he introduces, in fact, he put U1, U2, U3, U4, introduce a big continuum fraction, a very general, uh, the proof is totally different. So you use uh, sometimes some analytic, uh, but so I just uh, mimic this. And uh, F is for fixed point. When you have the cycle notation, it's going to be the fixed point. Not only you are, we are counting cycle, but you distinguish between cycle of length one and general cycle. And here I distinguish between the left to right minimum element and left to right minimum element, which come from the uh, is a step. So, so lambda k b k. To get this formula, you have to split into, again, in a nice way, and you get this moment uh, very easily. And uh, if you want to look on the, all the six parameters, so you see the A 
A, B, C, D, the A is the number of valets, the B is for the peak, the D for the double descent, the C for the double rise, it was by I, B, C, D, and now you have the, the left to right minimum element, all are weighted by beta, but this one there is no, no right sound, so in that case I put alpha. And in the next lecture, this will correspond to the, there will be, this will correspond to all the cycle I am going to introduce in the permutation, and this will be the fixed point. And this will be a cycle which have a length bigger equal to two. Okay, so next time, we will do two more uh, interpretation. We cycle the Lager hips, and then I will show you how all this story can be constructed in a very, very easy way. Starting from the, the first bijection with inversion table, where you put the one, you put the two, the three, three, four, five. Each time you open new cell, new cell, new cell, new cell. This is you give one, multiply by two, multiply by three, multiply by four, multiply by n. So I will restart from this. And with a simple idea, we will get all this Lager history, cycle, etc., etc., Charlie. Okay, so thank you very much for this morning.